Hello everybody and welcome back. I am your host Sonot the Hero Type and we're going to be doing our very first launch and getting into official sounding rockets. What I mean by that is a sounding rocket that has actual sounding payload. We'll be talking a little bit about the contracts and how they've changed from 1.8 to 1.10 and a few other things like that. We're going to be hopping over to Mission Control to talk about a few things real fast and then get to the first launch. And a little bit later, I will have a question for you guys to decide how we're going to do the next episode of How to RP1. So stick around for that. And because this is something that I'm apparently supposed to do earlier in the video, if you guys like the content, give it a like. And if you want to see more, feel free to subscribe subscribe that being said let's go ahead and hop over to mission control so i can go over something real quick with you guys and then we'll launch this very first rocket so enough with the monologue let's go <laughs> so this is pretty basic it's our first launch contract basically hit 50 meters a second and achieve 1000 meters so that's all we have to do but we're going to be going for so much more now i also wanted to talk about the milestone contracts as well as the changes to the sounding rocket contracts but until we actually do the first launch we can't really talk about the sounding rocket stuff and it's going to be easier to show you guys the milestone contracts when we're in launch so let's go ahead and hop over to the launch pad Now, one of the first things you want to do is make sure your science is running, which you can do with this little menu up in the corner and make sure your staging is set up correctly. I talked a little bit more about the staging for this rocket in the last video. I did, however, forget to upload the craft file, so I will try and remember to do it with this one. Anyways, we have everything running. We want that. Now, it's going to be zero of zero because there's no science to be gained from here. In fact, we won't actually start getting science until we're high above. That's one of the updates with RP-1. You can't cheat science from flying low like you used to be able to. Now, I'm just going to speed ahead because I was kind of just going through and checking everything real quick and giving my launch setup. But now we're going to actually do our first launch. Now, again, we're going to stage and then pretty much stage almost immediately. You want to stage and stage again. Now, we did get a little bit of a wobble, but that's fine. It was not a perfect launch but I still believe this rocket can get at least past the Carmen line. Now there's a pro and con to having your first launch break the Carmen line. The con is you actually lose out on a low altitude contract, but honestly, it's not really worth that much. And the time you save from going to the next set of contracts is worth it in my opinion. If you don't quite break the Carmen line with your first contract, do keep that in mind as there will be one additional mission that you are able to do. Unfortunately, we're gonna get locked out of it. Now up here, you're gonna see all these contracts start going off flight crazy and it's because we're breaking milestone contracts the best way to put it is after you hit a milestone it will generate another milestone contract for example hit 10 kilometers which will complete when you go past 10 kilometers and then it will generate a 20 kilometer and it will kind of keep doing that until you get to a certain height limit and then they'll cut off milestones are really good for early rp1 because it generates extra funding that you're gonna need later in the game it's purely contracts You'll get some milestones here and there for visiting new planets, but for the most part, those will eventually go away. Now, real quickly, I just wanted to point over to the Kerbalism screen, and you'll see the science takes time to run. That is a Kerbalism function. You should have it for RO, but you don't need it. But to be honest, I think it makes the game a little bit more entertaining and gives you reasons to do multiple launches because you'll have to launch the same experiments so many times to get all of the science for it. So we had a good launch. We're going to go to like 150 kilometers. We're going to break a bunch of contracts and stuff. And we're going to kind of speed through this here in a minute. But before we do that, pep talk time. Your first launch may not go this successful. It may fail, crash, and burn. You, you may not hit the Carmen line. Don't be discouraged. RO takes a lot of time to learn. And trust me, it's definitely worth it. Everyone sucked at one point. Like, I used to have so much trouble with this rocket. And now I can pretty much sleep when I build it. And I'm making bad youtube tutorials about it so follow your dreams anyways up here in the corner you can see this little transmit data window i'd recommend playing around with the kerbalism screen because it has a lot of helpful and useful information but data from experiments will transmit over time so you don't have to recover every rocket but i have babbled so long i never actually sped any of the footage up so let's go ahead and get to the next step of our journey and get into building an actual sounding rocket 
So I'm a liar. We're actually going to go to the R&D building after we kind of clean up some of these contracts. And I want to kind of ex explain to you guys how the science stuff works for early RP1. The nice thing is we got a bunch of funding from that launch. So we'll have plenty of money to build our next rocket and spend some upgrade points, which I'll also kind of touch on as well. Again, I'm going to be making some more shorts down the road when I get time to go more in depth on each of these individual screens. So don't worry. I am trying. They should hopefully be out as soon as I can get them going. Let's go ahead and hop over to the R&D building now. So normally you have a few choices here and it really depends on your play style. Like up here at the top, we have X-Plane stuff, which we may be covering in our next episode. I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but typically I recommend starting off with basic rocketry and material science, mostly because that will allow you to start building better rockets for the sounding rocket phase, as well as get you closer to unlocking orbital rocketry. Now everything in this tab we're looking at is X-Plane related. So if you're not gonna do X-Planes, don't worry, about any of this i'm either gonna make a dedicated episode to x planes even though i already have one or we're gonna make a short touching on a few changes now we're just gonna grab the very first four of these which is basic rocketry material science avionics and the x planes tab now i'm gonna zoom in real quick because i want to show you guys something you're going to see these little arrows kind of like this one here and here and basically what those mean is you have to unlock the tab before it on the tech tree if that makes sense. If it doesn't, I'm sorry. Maybe I'll make a short just kind of going over the tech tree. I have not decided to add that to my list yet. If that's something you would like to see, let me know in the comments. Now over here, you're gonna see some engine upgrades. So you can unlock new parts and the new engine variants or upgrades, which we'll be going into a little bit more on the next episode, actually, when we talk about updating your rockets and stuff like that. So don't worry about that now, we will get to that. So now that we've selected our tech, let's go ahead and hop over and get to the next part. We're going to grab a sounding rocket contract as well as build the sounding rocket. So there are a couple ways to do these intro contracts. Um, we're going to be grabbing the Carmen line contract as well as an actual sounding rocket contract, mostly because if you could just do both with one launch, it will save you time, money, and a few other things. So we're going to grab the Carmen line contract because a sounding rocket should easily be able to break the Carmen line. But I wanted to show you guys this 3k down range contract. We're not going to be doing that in this episode or probably even the next, depending on how this all works out. Do not accept that until you are ready for it as you were limited on how many contracts you can have this early in the game so you don't that want that one stuck there kind of taking up a slot we will go over that in a separate video though so anyways let's go over to the sounding rocket contracts now i'm going to zoom in a little bit here in a second because i kind of want to show you what i mean by changes now the biggest difference and it's for the downrange contracts only there's a little thing in there that says you have to maintain sufficient control which means you cannot just use a science probe or spin stability. You actually have to control the rocket. That was one of the big updates that kind of screwed up my old How to RB1 series. That being said, we're going to do an altitude rocket, which will be uncontrolled for our very first rocket. And then when we get to the next episode, I'm going to show you how to make that a controlled downrange rocket and a few other things about upgrading and all that stuff. So let's finally go over to the VAB and get to work on our very first sounding rocket. So we're going to build our first real sounding rocket and I'm going to build it based off the original rocket we launched. There will be a few things we need to, need to change. So I'm going to go ahead and make the nose cone the root part so it can take some stuff off the bottom. We're going to be using procedural avionics and there's a reason for that, which I'll touch on here in a second. Now I did bring up that one meter guidance unit deal right here, which would work great. Um, but I like to make my rocket 1.25 meters in diameter, which is perfect because procedural avionics actually start off at 1.25 meters in diameter. Now, the reason I do this is down the road, you will get these contracts that require you to put a camera on the rocket. The camera is 1.25 meters in diameter. Now you can do this any way you want. This is just a little bit of a tip, like for my end. In fact, here in a second, I'll actually grab the camera and I'll put it down and show you what I mean. But if you look here, you'll see that it's 1.25 meters in diameter. I'll go over the rest of the windows here in a second. Let me grab that camera unit real quick and show you guys what I was talking about. See, when you mount it onto it, 
it makes it, it's perfectly aligned it's the exact same size which makes building that particular downrange rocket super easy but again do what you guys want to do that's just a little bit of advice for me. Now let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Now, as you're about to see, tooling avionics is super expensive, so make sure they're set up correctly before actually purchasing it. The good news is once you purchase a certain diameter of avionics, if you need to stretch it out for control or electric charge or whatever, it actually ends up being cheaper to stretch a tank or avionics than it is to actually make it thicker. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and make it one meter in diameter, like the other control core we were looking at, and the tooling is less initially. But once you get that 1.25 meter tooling cost done the first time, it will be cheaper to use that size for basically the rest of the game. Now there are some stipulations to that, but for the most part that holds true. Now I'm just going to delete this and grab another one because I'm too lazy to resize it. And we're going to start building the rest of the rocket around this avionics core. We're going to make the tank and the nose cone a little bit thicker, or I guess wider in diameter. One thing I wanted to point out is with sounding rockets, you have to have sounding payload. Sounding payload can be put in two containers. Service modules, which cost way too much to freaking tool, or high pressure steel tanks. I need to emphasize that because it's only the steel tanks and only the high pressure variants that can do it. You just go down to this little tank UI menu here, and here is your sounding payload. Now this is a little over 700, which is, it, it's a lot. It's really a lot for this early rocket, but I'd rather build a little bit bigger early. That way I can reuse this rocket X amount of times before needing to make a bigger rocket. It will save you money and you can spend more points into upgrades like for the VAB and R&D. I think one of the biggest changes between stock and RO is you build a launch vehicle to launch a payload and you reuse that launch vehicle just like you would in real life. You're not gonna make a different booster setup every time you need to launch a payload. You build a launch vehicle and you use it as many times as you can before building the next. Now that I'm, gonna, I'm done rambling about that, we're gonna go over here and we are gonna grab, well, I'm gonna grab the service module and kind of show you how expensive it is. Just in its default size, it's $8,000. And that's simply just to tool it. So please make sure you grab the conventional structure and not the service module when you're making tanks especially early on because you will spend so much money and you'll be paying so much money for that mistake anyways we're gonna go ahead and stretch the tank out to 1.25 diameter and i like to start with about eight meters in length we will be using the rd100 engine because it's it's my favorite early game engine but you can achieve the same effect with the a4 or the xlr41 or any other early game engines my biggest reason for the RD100 is it has a bunch of upgrades. That That's really what it comes down to. And if you scroll down here, you'll see all these little upgrades and what they do and how they change and stuff like that. You get the upgrades by going through the tech tree and then you purchase the upgrades in the VAB. Now we have it mounted, so we need to do a few things like add wings and make sure our tanks are all set up. Because this is a non-pressure fed engine, we can go ahead and switch that tank to a standard steel tank and not a high pressure. It will actually save us some weight. We'll get a little bit more volume out of it, which means more fuel to burn longer. A little side note, don't feel like you're wasting stuff if you don't hit the full burn time. Uh, sometimes it just doesn't happen. That being said, usually, especially early booster stages when you get into orbital, you want to maximize everything the first stage can do to kind of help keep everything a little bit more relaxed for your upper stages. Now the next important thing I want to talk about is avionics and how they work. So right now we are on a near earth. This is set up for a controllable rocket. You can enter the controllable mass up on the top thing. But what I wanted to talk about was this electric charge. You do not need a lot of this, especially early on. Like 350 units is over an hour of runtime. This rocket's not going to live to see an hour of runtime. Electric charge also does take up weight and mass. And my personal motto on that is... Minimize mass and maximize efficiency. I know it's dumb, but anyways. So you can adjust the electric charge here and it'll actually change the sizing of it. So kind of play around and see what's gonna work for you. Also reusing probe cores if possible to save some money. Um, I talk a lot about the whole money thing on this because early on you want as much funding as you can to put into the space program rather than spending it on other stuff. But now we're gonna go over to the science core. Similar setup, but not quite the same. Uh, science cores have no controllability. I personally like them because they weigh a little bit less early. It's not a huge difference, but it gives you a little extra 
for Delta V. So if I know I'm not going to control the rocket, I go with the science core. Both controlled and non-AV uh, controlled cores can have experiments built into them. And the science core does save a little bit of money when it comes to tooling costs. I'm going to set this around 2 to 250, even though we don't need that much electric charge. Um, anything less than that, it really doesn't matter. Now we can click on this configure experiment thing down here. And we can actually click between these tabs and put experiments inside the core. It does add weight and it does cost a little bit of funding and at the same time reduces part count. And in my opinion, I think it looks a little bit cleaner, especially on these earlier rockets. You don't have a bunch of stuff hanging on the sides of them and everything. Uh, that's just my personal like opinion on it. But you can still access them through the Kerbalism menu that we looked at previously all the same. So I'll leave that up to you. You can add up to four of them on a core. So just kind of keep that in mind, especially if you're trying to keep part count down. Um, this game can get a little laggy when the part count gets a little too high and even with a good computer like I have a middle upper class computer and it still gets a little laggy when it comes to some bigger build. Now you'll see me kind of messing around I was subconsciously just checking things out even though I'm supposed to be filming a tutorial but the other thing I wanted to talk, to talk about is you can actually click these and select them and make them say waiting like I just did. In fact I'm gonna go ahead and flash that back one second. So these are the science experiments we put on there. If you select them to waiting, they'll automatically just start when you load the vehicle in on the launch pad. If you're kind of a forgetful person, it's a nice little thing to know. Now I'm going to speed through this next part a little bit because I'm just going to kind of build the wings on this. And then I'm going to stop so I can go ahead and explain spin stability real fast. Um, I kind of already explained how to build the wings in episode zero. And I do actually have another sounding rocket video that does go more into depth on the wings. And to be honest, there's so many things about the wings in this game that it would take its own episode to even cover it all, so I may end up doing that. Um, I don't know what that just was. Anyways, here in a second, you're going to see me kind of offset the wings to where they're not lined up the way they are now. They're going to be kind of offset like this. And the reason for that is because of the launch clamp I'm using. You don't want your wings to hit the launch clamp when they come off the pad or it'll just cause the rocket to go wherever. But once you get the wings adjusted and designed the way you want them to, make sure, you know, your center of lift is going to stay below your center of mass and all that stuff I've said and babbled on before we're going to actually tilt the wings slightly one direction. Now you're going to have to fine tune this and a lot of it does take practice to kind of understand the best way to tilt the wings because not doing it enough will cause it to not spin correctly and doing it too much will cause it to spin too fast and can actually rip your rocket apart. Now you really have to angle them a lot to get it to rip itself apart but it is a possibility. You're going to see me use the rotate tool. I'm going to turn snap off and just very slightly tip it one direction or the other left or right it doesn't matter i prefer to go right it's just how i prefer to do it but you can tilt them either way i had to fix my wings real fast because i accidentally screwed them up when i control z it but moving on from that i'm actually going to tilt the wings with snap turned on just so you can kind of see what i mean by how it, it just does it way too much see how even i'm holding shift down to do the the micro stuff and it's still just way too much if you have editor extension redux you can set it to one degree with snap and go once or twice and that should be fine. You can also use like a line of the rocket to see how much tilt you actually have. Like I'm going to use a center light blue line here just to kind of see where my angle actually is. Again, it's going to be one of those things that you have to practice and kind of get used to. So take your time with it. Use the simulation stuff. Really get to know the rocket. But we're going to zoom ahead real fast because I want to talk about the launch clamp. Now this particular launch clamp is in the stock game. It's like the T18 clamp. The reason I like using this so much for sounding rockets is it makes it really easy to make them down range, which unfortunately we won't have time to go into on this episode though that will actually be something we talk about in the next episode when we talk about upgrades and everything that being said we're at the point to where we need to test this rocket get ready to tool it it's gonna cost you know eight thousand funds give or take tool a rocket so at this point i'd recommend simulating it seeing how it does and really really learn what the limits are and what it can and can't do and where you can make changes and improvements even as someone who's played ro for as long as i have i still constantly make improvements this little simulation thing here, this is going to be your lifesaver. This little menu here is going to make this game a lot easier than it would be without it. Trust me, I have a save file where I don't use simulations and it sucks. But we're going to go hop over to the KSC now because there's a few things I want to talk about before we end the episode. So I will see you guys there.
Okay, so we got that big chunk of funding from our first launch, and there's a reason why I haven't spent any of it yet. Because I wanted to make sure I could tool, build this rocket, and buy anything that I may need for it. So I'm going to go ahead and scrap the uh, first type rocket, get rid of it because we don't need it. And I have two of the first sounding rockets in queue. Now that it's tooled and everything's paid for, I know how much money I can spend on upgrade points. Now we're going to buy four of them. And it's going to put us down to about 17,000, which that, that's a good safety range. I usually recommend trying to have at least 20,000 in the bank if possible. And if you know you're going to need to buy like an expensive engine or build a new launch vehicle, wait to spend the point, the sorry, wait to spend the money until you build the launch vehicle and then buy the upgrade points after you'll save yourself a lot of headache. But with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap this episode up. I didn't save enough footage to do a proper outro, so I'm going to go ahead and switch over to me exploding the rocket we just built, and we'll do the outro there. So let's go do that now. So, hello, here we are at the end of the video. Um, just something real quick I wanted to talk about. In the middle of this video, my the, the mic gets a little shaky. I broke my mic stand, and I had to use an, an older mic because it doesn't. I didn't have a stand that I could hold this mic in. I went and got myself the parts I needed to fix it. So we should all be back on track. Just wanted to point that out. Now, that being said, I would like to thank you guys again for stopping by and checking the video out. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I definitely hope you guys learned something. As always, if you liked the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, feel free to subscribe. Also, keep an eye out for more shorts. They will be coming out soon. I'm trying to get a handful of them together and release a bunch of them like back to back. And please remember if there's a certain thing you want me to cover, leave a comment and I will do my best to cover it as good as I can. With all that out of the way, the plugs and stuff, let's go ahead and blow this rocket up. And ask the question, would you like me to make an explains video or do you want me to stick with rockets? Let me know in the comments. Thank you guys again for stopping by and I hope I see you next time in chapter 2 of How to RP1.